High Plains Technology says it's time for school. Well, it's Wednesday. The kids are off to school, and so are we. It is time for school. <laughs> With <laughs> High Plains Technology, we've got Katie Shirley and her guest again today. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yep, today I have with me our welding instructor, Tracy Borden. Good morning, Tracy. Hello. Tracy's been at High Plains about 26 years. Yes. Is that correct? As our welding instructor, and he's also teaching our evening welding right now. How's that going? Very well. We've got uh, five people that show up a lot, and once in a while we have a couple others. And I've heard you had a student who you you think's in the wrong career right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there's uh, one Rivera in there who has a lot of talent, and we, we kind of questioned his uh, career choice. Yeah. <laughs> and he is a banker? He is, is a banker, correct? yes. Well, that's pretty interesting. So... Um, and we, we have that class. You haven't taught it in a while, though, probably. So have you or had you taught it before? It's been a long time since I've done that. Yes. It's a late night for you every week when you teach that. But Yeah, I get to school at 7.30, leave at 9. Home at night. It's a long day. Well, that's good that, that we offer that program. It seems to always be a need for someone to learn and have a place to, to weld. Um, so let's talk about your program this year and how it's going. Like what? <laughs> so tell us about the the rookie students. How does their year start out? Okay. Um, I have everybody welding. Gen- I, I like to have them welding day one. Uh, sometimes it's day two because we have to get two safety tests over with for arc welding before they're legal to go out into the shop and weld. And, of course, that gives them one more day to get all their gear together. Um, the smart ones show up with their gear on day one. Anybody shows up in shorts, boy, they're they're in for a bad day. <laughs> so we get them running beads at, at least by day two, and then they're in the booth, and they owe me a certain amount of basic welds before I will let them work on a project because when they go to that project, I don't want them worrying about how their weld looks. I want them to worry about how the project goes together. Did they build it right? Did they get their dimensions correct? Is a customer going to be happy with this project when it's finished, not what their welds look like? Right. So uh, they owe me about 16 welds, and they have to be A quality, which means it's at least as good or better than what I can run. So uh, I expect a pretty good standard out of those kids. Awesome. So now they're all out of the booth by now for sure, right? No, we've still got a few stragglers. Okay. And so what are some of the projects that... um, What what kind of slowed us down a little bit was... Um, we're, we're trying to expand High Plains, and we got an opportunity to get a driving school oh, yes. through a partnership with Drumright, which is the king of the of the truck schools in Oklahoma. So they came to us, hey, we want to bring trucks, we want to bring drivers, we need a place to do it. So uh, my class and the diesel class all kicked in and some others, and uh, we totally change the landscape up on the hill of all the training systems up there so we can have this course for the semis and, and the and the students. Yeah, and since you brought that up, I'll go ahead and share um, on on um, air now. This was, we just shared it on social media last week that we are going to be hosting a CDL truck driver training, and this is a company-sponsored program, so it's got to be the company that is sending these students um, January 9th is when it's going to start. It's 25 days long, and you um, complete the class with your CDL. And enrollment is opening November 1st, and there's only eight spots. So um, we expect quite the turnout on, on students. Well, I'm excited. I think it'll be a, a really nice service to the community. Well, thank you guys for all your hard work in doing that. And so now we'll get them finishing up in the booth and then t- um, tell us some of the projects that your students work on we have a custom pickup bed going that's um, we're going all out to make it really fancy and nice and throughout the year we mount a lot of pickup beds for individuals so i've got two of those waiting to get in what we're really kind of limited on is our shop space if we had a little bigger shop we could really tack some things a little bigger and a little better so we've got uh, those two pickups we need to get beds on and get that custom bed finished. We have three trailers waiting in the wings to be attacked and go on. 
so we, we have quite a bit lined up for a little while. Now, as, as all the rookies get out of the booth, then, yeah, I'm going to need a lot more smaller more projects. projects. Yeah. So we learn so much more out of a project. than Because the, the kid has to, to get plans, they have to draw plans, or the customer brings them plans. They have to please that customer. They have to order the materials. They have to work as a group, generally in groups of three. Uh, we try to make that our facility as much like an actual job as we can make it. And their grade is how well they did, how well they worked. Awesome. Um, so tell us about the competition coming up this Friday. Okay. We've done this for several years now. I need to go back and see how far it's been. It's 15 years-ish in that vicinity. I decided years ago that our district might need a little more practice to be a little more competitive so when we, we go to the state contest. And I thought the rookie contest, we hit it early in the year. Two kids from each school get to come. We have uh, seven schools in our district at this time. And so that would be 14 kids will come to that uh, competition. And we try to make it a, a good, stiff competition for them, but also something that those rookies could handle th- at this stage in uh, their education. And we give out prizes at the end, and the, the kids go home with a big pile of stuff. They can't carry all of it. Uh, the, the community kicks in, and the teachers bring in prizes, and uh, we feed everybody, and, and we get to kind of show off to the other schools in our district, come here, hey, we treat you nice, uh, we feed you good, and we have a good time. And those kids could learn a lot from that contest, and then – a lot of those kids, well, I'll see them again in February at the, the actual district contest, and I might see them again at state level also. So I feel like it does our district a lot of good, and a lot of these kids benefit a lot. That's awesome. Do you want to go ahead and give a shout-out to some of the um, community people that have really supported your program? Well, Woodward Steel allows us to get all the practice metal we want out of all their drops, drop bins, and then, of course, when we get done with it, we take it back to them. And um, it's it's a great partnership for us, and they enjoy us uh, being their partner, and we enjoy them being our partner. If we had to buy all that metal, you know, yeah. we'd be bankrupt. There's no way we could do that because these kids burn a lot of metal <laughs> yeah. and a lot of electrode, so it's a lot of money. It takes a lot of money to learn how to weld yeah. and to be good at it. And also, uh, Jeff and Josh Wilson have been partners with us just every day and anything i could ask for they would make sure we had it they'd find it they'd give it to us whatever we needed so those are two of our biggest partners and there's a lot of other people in town that that are very uh, nice to our program and uh, th- th- we just get a lot of good out of the community that way awesome so what is the end goal um, certification for a welding student at the end of class in april we uh, kind of like our final exam. I like for every kid to take the 6G pipe test, and some people out of the night class also take that. And that is your state, Oklahoma State Welder Certification Card. And uh, that gets them in the door for all, all their jobs that they go to. Okay. And we also open that up to the public, too, right? As oh, yeah. Anybody that yes. needs to come take that I, test? I try to advertise that hard so that. We are, we are f- uh, good friends with our test guy. Used to be his dad, and his dad finally retired, and when, now we use the son. So when he comes out here to fill a day, the more people I can drum up, the, the better the day is, and more people off the street, and it serves our community, and, and it helps Lonnie out and makes his day a little more profitable. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tracy. And I was going to share a couple things. Um, this week has been pretty crazy at High Plains. Monday we had college day so over 300 um, students were at high plains visiting around 30 plus different colleges and then today is life happens we did this last year um, for just our um our our students and this year we've opened it up to i believe all our partner school seniors so they get a certain amount of like a salary they get a certain job and they get a certain salary assigned to them. And then they go to, around to different booths on figuring out how much to allocate towards rent, 
um, their vehicle, how many kids that they've been assigned, and learn how to budget. So we want to thank, um, we have quite a few good sponsors with that, is Voice Electric, Stock Exchange Bank, Great Plains Bank, Kevin Kanzler Insurance, Northwestern Electric, Pioneer, Telephone, Keller Williams, and Boomer Kids Club. So they'll all be there at a booth and help the student figure out if they have enough money or if they've gone break, bake, <laughs> broke. Okay. And then Friday night, Woodward Skilled Nursing is going to host a community-wide trunk or treat, and we're going to be there handing out candy. So thank you, Tracy, for being our guest this week, and we'll be back here next week on 100.1.